thank you so much for tuning in to the first episode of All Grown Up. This is crazy. Our new podcast. This is something that's going to be looked upon every single day, heard around the world. This is something that's going to be a, a monumental moment in both of our careers. Finally, after 10 years of me doing YouTube, I finally get to do something and show you guys the real, raw, uncensored version of Phase Rug. And I couldn't be more excited. Noah is taking a sip of alcohol right now because he's taking this celebratory, serious. celebratory. This is something is this is huge. This is a huge monumental moment for us. Noah and I have been talking about this for over a year. And it's so exciting that it's finally here. Look at the sign. We got all grown up. Look at the merch. First of all, too. I mean, look at this. I mean, the bucket hat. I just think overall, this whole process of getting this podcast together has been a long one, but it's finally here and now it's time to crush it. I'm ready. I I'm agree. super excited. And I think my supporters out there will really appreciate to see how many things we have to talk about. Definitely. And seeing the real side to me, and when I say real side to me, not like I'm being fake on YouTube, but more of like just a chill, calm, phase rug version and more me and Noah talking and, you know, talking to our First of all, there's so much behind the scenes that people don't understand that happens to us in a good and bad way. There's so many things that we haven't expressed ourselves because on a YouTube video, it's super hard to tell you guys and tell everyone what we're really thinking because it's a YouTube video. But now we have yep. the platform to really express ourselves, say what we have to say, talk our yeah. because there's a lot to talk about. And I honestly just can't thank you guys enough for trusting this and you know no, clicking on this video like you're just right trusting us to have this podcast you guys showed a tremendous amount of support when we just dropped our trailer like that motivated me and noah even more than we already were because you guys are excited you guys are ready to see this and i can't begin to explain how involved you guys are going to be a part of this podcast like, definitely we're talking video. giveaways we're talking just answering questions maybe flying fans in in the future like just a ton of stuff that I get to finally talk my Let's go! So Stop much playing. Stop they, playing with my boy Rug, first I just want to say, like, this isn't going to be, like, a drama podcast. Like, we're going to talk no. about real shit. We're going to talk about a ton of stuff that's, that's happened to us and a ton of things that have happened that are bad. But then, like, this isn't about, like, negative shit. Like, this is literally, I'm still Faze Rug. I'm still this positive guy. Definitely. I'm humble. I'm going to remain humble throughout everything in my life because that's just how I was raised. For sure. And I'm just excited to get right into the first episode. And you guys already know, it would not be All Grown Up or Faze Rug without... Chug Rug! Come on. Come on, guys. You already know Chug Rug <laughs> is the greatest flavor of G Fuel of all time and, and i'm not even like trying to like you're not biased i'm not i'm not trying to because i anymore. agree with that i'm not that's not my product i have nothing to do with g fuel that is probably one of the greatest energy drinks i've ever had in my life and Listen. that's that's no cap i'm not lying it, the taste the flavor how much energy it gives you there's no sugar in it like and this is me saying that and like the thing is this is something that I actually consume on a daily basis. Same like here. some people might think I'm just promoting it, but I actually drink this. Noah drinks this. Everyone in my family loves it. And I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but you know, it's <laughs> uncensored, but the CEO of G Fuel yeah. hit me up and he's like, yo, like your flavor is the it's did? literally the it's my favorite flavor. He said his G Fuel fridge is only filled with chug rug. Well, I mean, and I don't want you know, I don't want to say anyone else's <laughs> flavor is bad because I love G Fuel as a whole. Of course. But I just think, like, this is actually the best flavor, and you guys already know, like... When you have the best flavor, you're going to say you have the best flavor because it's true, and that's G Fuel. I actually might chug get Chug Rug tatted on me. And I'm not even exaggerating because... Where would you get it, though? It's just a big part of my life. It's not something that's, like, I'm not being paid to say I'm getting Chug Rug tatted on me, you know? For sure. I don't know where I would get it, but all I'm saying is that... So many people tried it. So many people have come up to me in public and told me that it's the greatest thing they've ever had. So many people on the internet. It's actually just a big part of my life. And Definitely. I'm super grateful and blessed that I have that flavor. All right, so that's enough of that. It is time to get into the first segment of All Grown Up. Wow, just to say that, Yo. just to say that, that's crazy. We're sitting here. We have merch on that says All Grown Up now. It's not A just year that. later, it's official. It's literally here after we've been talking about it. It's brought to life and we're recording our first episode. But to start it off, we want to give you guys some real life updates. For sure. You know, I think that's great 
to start off the episode because you guys want to know about our real life and behind the scenes, what we're doing off camera, like what has been going on in your life and what have you been going through? Like, give me an update on what, how, give me an update on how you are. This feels good. It like, does. This really feels good that I'm just here able to talk about it and yeah. Like, my fans are watching. Definitely. I just feel grateful to be here with you especially and just to be on a podcast like this because, again, this is somewhere we can express our feelings. This is somewhere where we feel comfortable about talking about certain topics that some people might not want to talk about. Yeah. There's so much that we can open up. There's so much that we can open up about and really just be honest with you guys and be honest with ourselves at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, I've had a lot of times where I wanted to talk about stuff, but it just wouldn't make sense on my YouTube channel and keeping that bottled in really hurts and it takes a huge toll on your mental for sure but um you know my real life update right now is as a lot of people may know i just moved to la huge. this was the biggest move of my life it's sure. been a month yeah and so far things have been great it's yeah. it's been tough at times because you know i've lived with my family for 24 years wow 24 years great number though great number oh yeah shout out kobe man rest hey. in peace so not only did I move to LA, but I also recently just broke up with my long-term girlfriend. You know, it's been, we were together for about five years. It was on and off yeah. for the first like year or two. But after that, we had a consistent like three years and we chose to break up. And of course that is very, very tough on Relationships anyone. Relationships are scary, bro. Relationships on scary. anyone, if you go through a breakup, like I feel your pain. Like it's actually tough. It's mentally draining because you get so attached to the person that you're with and you mold yourself to kind of be like that person and they do the same with you. So it's yeah. kind of crazy that to when, you, when you finally separate from a person that you really thought you loved and you thought you liked for so long, it's like, what do I do with myself? Now? You have to like learn how to be yourself. Again. Yes, because even when, how heading, to be by yourself. when you're heading into a relationship in general, you have to love yourself before even heading into that. Because if you don't love yourself, you're not going to love the person you're with because you don't even love yourself to begin exactly. with. So you want, you want to balance with it. you and Kaylin, I always supported that but i always wanted you mentally and physically all around just to be happy i want yeah, you to be definitely. happy so i mean sometimes relationships don't work and you guys go your separate ways things might happen in the future but uh, i'm, I'm glad away. that like me and kaylin ended off on good terms because she's a really really good girl and she's for sure she's a real one yeah but you know sometimes just things don't work out yeah and that's okay that's life it's not only that but on top of like the breakup moving to la this is the biggest move of my life. It really is. A and, podcast. And like... Like this, what, this this podcast... Sorry to keep interrupting. No, you're good. It's, this is our first time, guys. You know, this, cut yeah, us some this, slack. Uh, you're getting the jitters out right now. But I'm saying like the, the process of you even going to LA, people have no idea what it took for you to even do that behind the scenes and mentally and even to get yourself to fully move out here... I mean, you mentioned in the past that you were moving to LA before oh, and you never made the move. Plenty of times. So the reason for me not moving to LA in the past when I used to promise it was because when I'm in LA in the moment when my friends are like, bro, move to LA, we got a room for you. Like in the moment, I'm always like a yes man for some reason. Yeah. I always just say like, okay, yeah, 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 I'll do it. I'm down, I'm down. And then I go home and I think about it and I'm like, do I really want to live with, you know, six people yeah, yeah. and people that, you know, don't grind as hard as I do. That's the main thing that people do keep... not understand about this kid. Like, the reason you did not move to LA in the past is because you have such a controlled environment in San Diego where you're grinding every other day to make videos, other content for social media. You're doing stuff behind the scenes that's huge. And I love my family. And you love your, which is not a bad I thing. I love my mommy. I love my daddy. Thing. I love my brother. And I am not ashamed to say that. I am a mommy. I think boy. that's so crazy that people, like, would talk about oh. you loving your family when that's why and, i didn't care about it it's like if i cared so much i would have like moved because i'm like oh my god people are saying i'm living with my mom at the age of 24. when in Not reality you love your mom to death because that's something you should do when you have a mom don't you want to love the only mom that you have like exactly that's crazy to me. it's not only that so after years of not moving to LA, yeah. I continued to grind in San Diego. I built a YouTube channel with over 19 million subscribers. I, and I honestly just want to give myself credit for that because you should. it was not easy. And a lot of people think making videos is easy. And I always like try to tell people like, it could, it could be looked upon as easy, but when you actually try to do it, there's so much that goes into it. So much that people have no idea that we 
plan hours and hours and hours and filming talk about for hours and like how much it drains us but we still do it because we love you guys and we want to provide you guys with entertaining content but at the end of the day it does take a toll on you yeah it definitely takes a toll honestly though it's crazy the timing of everything yeah the breakup the move to la the podcast all at once all at once yeah has really tested my mental health Definitely. And it's actually taught me to prioritize myself over other people because mental health is so important. And I've tweeted it before. Preach that. Preach that as much as you can. I know like a lot of people can relate and I can relate to you guys. Like I'm telling you guys that is so important to take care of your mental. As a person who cares so much about other people, I always forget to put myself first. You know, I always forget because I'm a very giving person. I'm a very... I love to help people, you know. And I think I just, that comes with. The, sorry to cut you off, but I feel like that comes with how you were raised, and I'm I'm the exact same way, and that's what we both know about each other. Like, yeah, we were both raised to cater not to other people, but to be loving. And a lot of people in today's society don't know how to show love because they weren't raised the way we were. We yeah. we know that like, life, and sometimes they didn't have that choice though. Exactly, that's not their fault. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I think me and you both think in a similar way, where it's like life is short. You know, we don't have a long time on this earth, realistically. So why not live it to the best that we can and show love to the people that we actually care about? Because why show love when they're not here? You know what I mean? Exactly. So I just want everyone to know that as much as you want to, like, take care of other people before you, make sure you're okay first. For sure. Seriously, like, I have dealt with a lot where I've put a lot of other people before me. and, And then, like, you see it as, like they're relying on you to be there for you yep. when they're not there for you that, the same way that you are. Exactly. Does that make sense? No, that, like, you that know, made perfect sense. And then I finally got to learn after moving away from my house. I'm not saying anything was with my family, but it was more like this move taught me how to be more of a man on my own. You know, like I get to be independent and I have to learn a lot of things for instead sure. of just being at my house given these things and you know there's food downstairs because my mom made some food like yeah. i need to learn how to be alone and that ties back it's all grown up like exactly. you are learning how to be your own person and you grow and you are growing up and let me just say there's nothing wrong with living with your family until you get your together because that is facts like you cannot just say, oh, I'm 18 and my friends aren't living with their parents. That means I can't live with my parents. No. People that compare themselves. What? And that's a great thing that you said that because what I've learned from this first month of living in LA is people come here with great careers already, great, great people. And they'll come here and compare themselves to everyone in LA because everyone has money here. Everyone has like nice cars. Everyone has mansions here. But in reality, bro, like you're supposed to go at your own pace. And that's what you've been doing and it's worked for you thus far. You've gone in your own pace. You're successful. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. But in total, in general, you're focused on yourself, which you should be. All right, Noah, now tell us about your pace and what you've been up to and how your life has been in the past, you know, few months year wow everything there's been a lot and there's just been so much on my plate in a good way and a bad way sometimes but i feel like the move to la definitely helped my mental a lot but it also taught me like you said how to grow up some more because i've never lived by myself only the one time that i moved to newport Mm -hmm. i moved to newport beach because it was an hour away from you an hour away from la and i'm from la i'm originally from here so to be back home i feel very happy very comfortable but at the same time like Life has been great. I really can't complain. Um, there's been things that haven't been the best for my mental health, whether it's like the influences of people going out all the time in LA, the ah. influences of different people in my ear. But see, with me, is like I'll take those influences and sometimes I might get distracted by them. But in general, I'll never let it change me as a person. And I'm very, very happy that I'm now living with you because you've always kept me grounded. You've always had me in a good work ethic and you've always really taught me how to do things more more so than not and I'm glad to be with my brother and I'm of finally happy I'm very happy that we're here we have a podcast that we're starting we have videos that we're making every other day and there's moves behind the scenes that we're doing and it's so huge so I appreciate that bro 100% honestly, like- 100% I think that people don't show enough appreciation as they should not to you but just in general to people that they care about and I always want to let you know that you're my brother and I'm so happy to be here and I think that In the past year or so, me and you have grown so much together as we should. I mean, we film videos every other day, but I feel like my real update for my life is just, 
it's been crazy. I'm just grateful. I'm happy to be here. I'm Grind super. I'm, I'm grinding. I'm having fun. I'm, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to be doing, and I think I'm doing it at a good pace. I mean, overall, I'm blessed. I'm happy we moved to L.A., but a little thing that's different is shooting your shot out here, bro. Like, <laughs> realistically, like, I've dealt with different girls. I know, like, how to handle certain girls and how not to, but when you come out here, bro, like, there's so much fake energy and fake emotion that you just don't know what you're doing with it's half different. the people out here. Yeah, for I'm sure. not going to lie. I was warned before coming to L.A. about, like, the scene, and, you know, I've been to L.A. a few times before moving here, obviously. And for sure. That's why I never moved here fully because I'm like, I don't want to get sucked into it. But yeah. I think I'm obviously mature and old enough to know where I stand. And it's like, I'm all about making content and all about doing this. And, you know, I like to have fun on the side. Definitely. But I think what people fail to realize is just because you have followers and a blue check mark and materialistic things that you don't have feelings. And that's crazy that people can't see that because at the end of the day, you take anything away from anyone. You're still a human. You take all the clothes off a person's body and they're homeless, they are human still. It I try to preach matter. that. I try to preach saying like, you know, like sometimes I'll get hate and I'm like, yo, like I think people fail to realize that I'm human. And like when I see comments about me like that, I get it's the internet, but it's like it still hurts. And that's why you're such a positive person and you preach that so much because you just want everyone to be on the same positive path of, hey – you're a human. I'm a human. We're the same person. Let's just grow and be like happy. Imagine if everyone in this world was positive. And again, like Noah said, that's why I preach it because I wish one day and hope and pray that one day the world will be a lot less negative than it is. Definitely. And, and it, everyone's lives will just be better. Like everyone will be happier. Like when you're next to someone who's constantly negative, it's like, like, bro, like you're sucking me into this negativity. Like Definitely. you're like taking me down from where I want to be. I'm not even trying to sound cocky or anything, but I've been in this game for a whole decade That's crazy. and I feel like I'm a veteran at this and I could tell whether people are fake or not. And it's just, it's just so obvious. You for know? sure. And after being in LA for a month, I have encountered so many fake people and Same I don't, here. I don't even like try to associate myself with them because I could just tell and I've been warned about it. And I think it's crazy because I'm not a vet on YouTube, but I just know when someone is not being genuine. It doesn't even take a platform for you to realize that people are looking left when you're looking in their eye. You know what I mean? And I think that's going to take us to our next segment, Fact Check. Hey, Come this on. is my favorite segment. Fact Check, baby. Time to put people in their f***ing place. Please. I need to. Come I on. got. I got to stand up for myself. You know, I'm sick and tired of people walking all over me. I'm not literally a rug, okay? I'm a <laughs> human. My name stems from Rugrats, okay? I'm not an actual rug that people step all over, but come on, let's get into the next But segment. that's what people like to think, so tell them what the is <laughs> good. All right. So how fact check is going to work is we're going to take some content from the internet, something that people have talked about, and we're going to fact check it, you know, whether it's people using my name for clout, for personal gain, lying on my name, because before this, I didn't have a voice to speak on it because I'm not going to make a whole YouTube video about it, Definitely. but I'm sick and that. tired of people lying about my name and I'm here to literally expose them because I'm sick of it. And there's one encounter in specific that actually pissed me off. Aiden Ross and FaZe Rock just confirmed a fight between themselves. What is below featherweight? Start lifting, start getting that team together. Let's do it, bro. Like, how much do you weigh right now? So right now I'm 120. Oh, Holy shit. shit. How do you weigh 120? 120 pounds as a 21 year old man? If FaZe Rock weighs that much, Aiden's gonna fucking destroy him. I'm 150, bro. So here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna lose weight. I'm gonna lose weight. No, no <laughs> Dude, don't, don't lose weight. Don't lose no, weight. FaZe Rock for his health reason needs to gain <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking huge. Once again, I have feelings i'm a human being and one of my biggest insecurities is my weight and listen to this it's not easy to gain weight for someone with a fast metabolism i have a fast metabolism i can eat three steaks back to back to back and i will lose weight yeah like i will crazy. lose weight it's not something that i decided that i wanted to be as skinny as i am but here's people body shaming in 2021, and again, they think just because, oh, he's FaZe Rug, he has 20 million subs, he shouldn't care. No, I care because it's like, I've seen their videos on my For You page on TikTok. And then when I saw that one in specific, it really hit because I'm like, damn, like they got some followers too. So like they are spreading that when I'm spreading the complete opposite, I'm spreading positivity i'm talking i'm telling people to be positive and there's people on the internet that are still talking down and being negative and oh my god for his health benefits he needs to gain weight yes i am aware of that 
but it's tough. It's literally you have a fast metabolism too. We weigh yeah. the same amount. And what I think is crazy is I don't think they're just coming at you because you are skinny. I think they're coming at you because because you I have, have twenty million subs. You have twenty million subscribers. They see an opportunity. It's to, obvious to get clout, and I think that. When they see an opportunity that big, they're going to pick at you for anything. I think people come at you saying, oh, he has a Lambo, he has a mansion. And that doesn't mean you don't have feelings. It doesn't mean that you are not a human at the end of the day. I think that people are just reaching because you're lit at the end of the day. This has people happened a lot, lit. but this one in specific just triggered me because it had something to do with my body. And just for context, these kids are recalling an encounter I had with them at a dodgeball event. And now we're going to fact check this. Sean just asked a question goes, are you like, uh, are you beefing with anyone? Do you have any drama? Or he anything? said that knowing though, right? I think Sean okay. did, but okay. I don't think he knew like the whole story. And Faye Rugg goes, yeah, I'm kind of in beef with the, the sink right now. <laughs> what? <laughs> are you kidding me? What? Who are you? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold up. <laughs> so you're saying I meet this random magician that I saw on TikTok because yeah. I needed him for a video. Mm -hmm. And I just start opening up about I am in beef with the sink let's take a I, step back hold on let's take, take a, a step, step back. back i've been doing youtube for nine years i randomly let this kid into my house to do a part for my video a two minute part the whole time he was at my house was 20 minutes you're saying a conversation came about who are you beefing with what that, that is one thousand percent a lie it's crazy because when you meet that is someone, cap. When you meet someone for the first time, you're not gonna be what? like, oh, you're not gonna open up that much to someone. No or, one was there, or even in general, why would you be beefing with the sink? I'm not beefing with anyone. I don't even see that as beef. I did not even think about this after the dodgeball event. But why the f would I ever bring that up to some random kid that I met? I know better than to who to share personal information with. Definitely, and that's not even information because I don't talk about them. They like to. Th think they're beefing with you but i, I mean know. this is what they're doing Guess they're, re they're reaching it's, it's at this the, point it's the title <laughs> and we're i'm like wait what like sean calls me and like tells me that over facetime i'm like wow we're living rent free in phase rug's head right now that's it's so funny. dumb bro what what a lie sean the magician came over for 20 minutes i'm sorry the nicest kid i've ever 100%. met he was, he was great so kid nice i was doing an overnight challenge on my roof yeah. okay and i needed like some entertainment i'm like yo let's call this magician you're saying in that 20 minutes he was here we brought up beef come on I, everyone out there watching please put yourself in that position is that even something believable if you're lying about it like that's not even believable let's continue Ed right now that's it's so funny. dumb bro that's crazy yeah it's funny how like he just like still thinks about us i mean i i, I don't, it's funny how it's considered beef when he just came up to us like pretty much told us, hey, you guys are the ones to talk about me. Yeah, we yeah. said yes, and he rejects Kai's handshake and walks off. I know. That's ding, ding, beef. ding! A hundred percent fact. Yes, we finally got a fact in this. I yes. Can, I can't believe that they are reaching this hard, dude. This it's hard. It's obvious why, and I'm so glad that my fans are very intellectual and smart because they know who are or not. Context: I ran into these kids at a dodgeball tournament. Yep. Three days prior to that. They had made a video talking about my body weight, as you guys saw. And then I saw them and they came up to me with the camera to my face saying, yo, what's up, Rug? Like, we're big fans. Can we get your opinion on this dodgeball thing? And in my head, I was like, dude, that is so fake. Okay, whatever. So they, I, I still went with it. You're but a nice guy. I, I am a nice guy. I'm being completely honest. Like, I am a very nice guy. But seeing that, after seeing that they made that TikTok about me, I made a smart comment in their thing. I was like, oh, good thing I'm not on the dodgeball floor because my 120 pound self would not be able to do anything. And they all looked at each other like, uh, um, okay. And that's oh, okay, Rug, thank you. Literally, like, I'm sorry, like, do not come up to me after body shaming me and being on some fake energy. Like, I don't with that. Guess what? If if you made a TikTok about me saying, oh, like rug is cool, like whatever, like I think I think honestly he could get like a personal trainer, maybe gain some weight. But the way that you guys actually just degraded me Definitely. and then thought that you could come up to me and be like, hey rug, we're big fans. I see some that's not beef. That's just like one small yeah. altercation. Because we've really gotten starting to get into the TikTok scene. We're getting into it right now, and then YouTube's like new to us. Meeting these YouTubers are different, bro. <laughs> they are different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they just don't take jokes as lightly. Cause like the beef is way more real. That's why I'm wondering, beef. like, dude, Rice Gum is the biggest troll in the whole entire why internet. Yeah. Like, hold, up, hold up, what does but Rice Gum have crater. to do with our altercation? Think just because I have 20 million subs that, oh, if you come up to me on some nice energy, I'm gonna be nice back. 
That's fake. Yeah. Maybe even just an apology. If you came up to me like, hey, bro, like maybe you might have seen our TikToks. We did talk about you, but honestly, like we're sorry and we hope that we could be cool. How would I have reacted, Noah? You would have been like, yo, bro, honestly, you're right. Thank you for coming up Thank to you. apologize. And I appreciate you guys saying that. So how do we gonna- Because I'm a real human being, all right? Whole Continue. entire internet. Yeah. Like he roasts he literally it. every creator in like- That's in irrelevant. Space. And like everyone knows it's a joke. And like with us, it's kind of like the same thing, but people take it more. Because three of us. I don't think most people take it as seriously, though, bro. I don't think. I think only select people. Yeah, Phase Rug. But it's just, it's just weird to me because Phase Rug and Phase Rug like knows Rice Gums content, and I would say like kind of our con like we're just like kind of like trolls. We like we're we're. But really wouldn't you agree that if Rice Gum did a live stream, he was going like, dude. If what does rug, Rice bro, he's gonna, have a to wind do could, him? wind could blow him down. He's 120 pounds. Like really laid into him, and they said, dude, have you seen his movie though? It's he was still coming. Eh, I would really say like on, that. Hold but on, like hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold eh, on. Wait, wait, wait. I like. Let's just say. Let's just. Let's just really. Let's just really think about this. They've said your name how many times in this whole entire podcast? First off, it, they've said it a lot, but it's like they tried going into rice gum, which has zero relevancy to this entire conversation. But what I didn't even bring up, I forgot to mention. I mean, this is a very important part to the story. I went up to them after that video clip. Yeah. So after they came up to me, I was like, dude, like, I actually feel some type of way. You know, I, I don't want them to just think that I'm okay with them talking about me. So I actually went up to them and I was like, yo, were you the kids that talked about me on TikTok? And they're like, talking, wait, wait, oh, did we make that? Like, they were like they literally frantic, up. like frantically just panicking. And I was like, that's not cool. Like, that's not cool and one of them came up to dap me up and i just turned around and walked away because i'm not gonna dap you up why would you dap up some fake that's trying to use there was not even a sorry it was just like ah oh, bro like come on like oh come on what bro Welcome. okay i, I get you guys are new to this i've been in this for nine years if you talk about someone don't expect to be cool with them that's just fake as hell doing youtube for what 11 plus years now mm -hmm. like, come on bro relax yeah it was yeah. kind of weird. It is kind of weird. It's, it's funny how weird. Sean just called me. He goes, uh, can you just tell me the backstory? Because uh, Face Rug was just talking about it. He mm. says, you guys, like, we, like, switched up when we saw him. Oh, because, like, we were, like, not being, like... We're not being dicks in To person. his face? Yeah. Well, stay true to your self. Switch up, bro. Get the... F I like, wouldn't switch up in front of your ass. Come on. It's such bullshit. Wait, wait, Yo, but we were kind of like, yo, what's going on? I said I wouldn't switch up in front of your ass. Weren't you there, like panicking as well i think this guy looked to the left as soon as you came up to him dude bro. that guy is a capper and i'm so sorry but you could tell guys <laughs> the way that these people are talking they are entitled they are delusional please do not give these guys clout they're so happy that they could finally have a chance to beef with someone we're Ooh. like we're nice people we like we do our jokes and our humor and that's our content and then and fucking real life scenarios we're just like want to meet the people and say what's good and then he was like nah no, he didn't say f he said like, mm -hmm. cause like, oh, do you guys roast us? And we're like, uh, yeah, like we did. And he goes, all right, well, whatever, man. And like turned his head. It was like, no, up. you guys are the ones that talk about me on TikTok, right? Yeah. Like, that was, I think that's what he said. And like the reason why we switched up is because I didn't even remember we spoke yeah. about you. Ooh, that's what? the biggest contradiction Ooh, I've ever what? Don't remember life. that you talked about us. This guy right here, <laughs> it literally thinks he's the no, obviously. Oh my god, this guy's sitting here like, I wouldn't have switched up, I would have done this, like, I didn't even know we talked about you. Yeah, f right, what are you talking about? <laughs> you guys have just been talking about this whole alter altercation, but you forgot that you talked about us? Like, I didn't, like, when well, you, it was a year ago. It was a year ago, and then the one, I guess, was like three days before that, but like, ah! dude, I don't remember <laughs> half the Three <laughs> days before! Liar! So you do remember. Wait, what a liar. So wait, hold on. Can we bring up the DM? <sighs> Should we? Yeah, right? All right. I guess I could bring up the DM. They messaged me. Guys. They can go ahead and grind, do the podcast. But if you're lying about someone, I'm coming on here and telling everyone that you guys are because I was there. I have a witness. You guys have like four people to back yourselves up. But I know that I'm a genuine guy and I know I will never lie the way you guys are. So here we go. Let's pull up their Instagram. <laughs> here is the message. Yo, what's good, Rug? We love your content and would like to have you on the podcast sometime. Let me know if you'd be interested. Well, you guys just lost that chance. 100%. And the thing is, I like how this whole entire time they are trying to back themselves up, making them seem like they're correct. Right? In reality, in reality, they're taking subtle shots at you the whole time. Exactly. They think they're just like, they're, they're just talking sh at the end of the day. They're not, they're missing the whole point of everything. They're exactly. just trying to take shots at me because, because they think I'm an easy target because. 
I just I just never beef with anyone to begin with. There's no reason to unless and this someone's isn't gonna beef. talk. I want people to know the only reason why this bothered me now is because they made this video lying that I keep talking about them when in reality that was a blatant lie. And that's why we have fact, fact check. check. Okay, guys, it's time for my favorite segment, story time. Oh, let's go. These are real stories that have happened, whether it's behind the scenes shooting a YouTube video or that just cannot be posted on YouTube yeah. because of how intense these stories are. But I would love to start. I know you have a good one. I have a really good story. Hold on. Let me just, it's freaking hot, dude. Sorry. You're good. Can I stand up? Yeah. Okay. okay. Oh, look at that another all grown up piece okay Beautiful. so i want to tell a story about a time that i almost got kidnapped scary uh, i literally almost got kidnapped like two years ago on some real so how did you how did you know you were getting kidnapped okay 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 let me let me just break it down so i was in my bathroom at my old house and i have a window that literally shows to my driveway so i have the view of my driveway okay and I'm just like taking a piss and I like, I just love looking out the window. It's a normal night. And I see this girl, like I'm talking like, like I would say like a 21 year old girl dressed as if she was going to the club. She was bad. Pretty much. Okay. So that's all I have to know. I thought that I was like, yo, is that like one of my friends? Like, is that like Kaylin? Is that someone that I know? And like, I look and like, she's walking up to my front door and I was like, what the f kind of got, Oh, let me, I forgot to mention. It's like 11 PM. Oh God. Okay. So Prime time to get kidnapped. I stopped her from going to the front door and I rolled down my window and I'm like, yo, like, what's up? Who are you? And she's like, oh my God, Brian. Oh my God. How are you? I was like, good. Who, who the are you? <laughs> and she's like, oh my gosh. Like, can you please come outside and talk to me? I was like, right off the bat. I was like, wait, hold up, hold up. Oh me my. come outside? I said, no, like, well, who are you? What do you, what do you, what's what do you your want from me? Yeah. It's like, I just want you to come outside and talk to me. I was like, uh, you could get the f my driver. I'm calling the cops. And she's like, please, like, just come out. Like, she just kept pushing the issue. And I was freaked out because I'm like, wait, what the f And I look to the corner of my eyes. There is a black tinted SUV oh. with four dudes in it running. Like, the car was running. I set up. A setup and I thought she was trying to lure me outside because there's maybe some other guy like by my front door getting ready to either kidnap me or break into my house and I told her to get the f out of my house or get out of my driveway and she just left in that car I saw it wasn't just another random car she went in that car with the four dudes and did of course dipped. of course so it was a setup Dude, all along how paranoid I was after I legit called the cops and I was like yo like this 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 and this happened I need like patrol to like you know, I was scared. I need Definitely. someone to just monitor my house for like at least a few weeks. And they did that because they're it. So I just want to say, if you were three shots in, would you have gone down there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not three shots no, in. I don't care. Like I'm, just, <laughs> I'm very like cautious about people around me. Of course. I don't know. Be. Like, I don't know these people again, guys. I've been literally like used and abused by millions of people. No, not millions. Like uh, a few a lot of people, a handful amount of people. And I just know who's fake and I know whose intentions are good or bad. And I just keep out for, and I just look out for that. So I don't know. You guys tell me, you think that was like a break in attempt or a kidnapping attempt? If you would have actually went down there, I would not see you this day, present day. I would not see you. I just day. think that's so crazy that that happened. And I didn't know if I wanted to talk about it, but I'm here and I'm talking about it. Cause we're all grown up. Baby. Exactly. <laughs> This crazy story happened literally two weeks ago. Yeah. And you already, were there. I already know what you're about to say. Guys, we went to a haunted hotel for a haunted video. <laughs> and it was spooky. All right? It was, it, it, it was a good video. And then me <laughs> being dumb, I posted a story of me in the lobby. Didn't tag the location. Didn't say anything about anyone pull up. Yeah. I just didn't think, because it was like a very small town that we were in, I didn't think anyone would know, mm -hmm. but then I sometimes forget the reach that I have. Yes, you do. Um, so I posted that, and then like an hour later, someone from the hotel comes up to us and is like, yo, you got some fans outside, and I'm like, oh, shit, really? Like, maybe some I should, fans, they said. Maybe some I should fans. probably delete the story, because like, I don't want people to be like freaked out or anything. Yeah. So I deleted the story, and then an hour later, an hour later, there's 100 to 200 people outside the hotel 
screaming, honking their horn. People were fireworks. Pulling, people were pulling up in Ubers. People were pulling up in Ubers. Off. People were like doing donuts in front of the hotel, screaming. <laughs> and it was actually in my video where I said like, "Yo, guys, like we actually." are getting kicked out of the hotel because the people outside scared the other guests in the hotel, rightfully so, because I was kind of scared. It was a mob outside. It was a mob. And let me just tell you guys real quick, like I absolutely will do anything for my fans and I love my fans to death and I'll actually do anything. You can vouch for me. 100%. Anyone can vouch for me. This guy has not denied a fan for a photo one time in Never. his life. And I have seen it Never. thick and thin. This guy could be getting mobbed. This guy could be in a hundred degree weather. This guy could be... Anywhere, if a fan pulls up to him, he's going to say yes for a picture. He's, so, he's super nice. Thank you, bro. So now, we're getting kicked out, and the cops are called, and the cops come up to the room, and they're like, yo, like, you guys got to go. And I was like, oh, like, are you guys going to lead me to my car, or, like, lead us to the car? No. They're like, no, you got to go on your own. And I'm like, yo, 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 hold on. Before yeah. that, think about 100 people outside, me... Of course, not knowing like people's intentions. For sure. And they're like, we are not allowed to do that unless crime is being committed. So... Let me tell you what I said. I said, wait, so you can only lead me to my car if I get, like, stabbed? And they're like, yeah, pretty much. So they're going to wait for a crime to be committed until you're dead already? And who knows? Maybe that might be the law. And it sucks if that's the law because maybe they don't Change that shit. encounter things like this that often, of course. But so we have to walk from here to there. All right. It's like a, it's just a straight shot. And there is in the middle a crowd of 100 people. So we go out and... We are just being straight mobbed. And then some guy grabs me in a chokehold. Yeah. A big guy. Like, I'm talking like he was like 6'2", very powerful, screaming like, ah, face rug, face rug. He asked me in a chokehold and I'm like, yo, 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 yo. I don't see the cops anywhere. They literally told us before, they're like, can you hurry up? We got another call to go to. This guy was drunk. It's like they literally ass. did not care what was going to go down. They just needed to leave. The guy... The breath, the smell of alcohol on his breath was so, so excruciating. It was like literally in my face, like just alcohol. I'm in a chokehold with hundreds of other people like grabbing me and touching me. And I'm like, yo, this is it for me. I'm, I'm done. I'm yeah. gone. I lost and you guys. I didn't know where you went. And I just started realizing that we were going a different direction to where the car was because the crowd was, was literally taking me to a us, different direction, literally pushing us towards somewhere else. And keep in mind, the car is this way. And we're like trying to go that way and we're and with they're sam pushing and, we're with sam and colby two other youtubers oh they they trust me they said they've never experienced anything like that ever and the thing is i just got a new car i was scared everyone's crowding around and after we even left people were falling oh our my car. gosh people so, were falling our car so check this like the guy is like dragging me and i actually like used my power and pushed him off i said yo get the off of me and I went straight to my car, like kind of pushing everything because that kind of triggered me. I was like, yo, like if you're going to be a, a supporter of mine, like please just be respectful. Please. That's all I ask. Like, again, this ties back to me being human. All right. I love meeting my fans. I actually like, like I love meeting my fans. It's, it's, it's like crazy because some people always tell me like, yo, dude, you're too nice. Like you're too nice. Like, yo, we got to go. Like I'll be in like a group of people, like a group of friends and we're out and I'm stopping every second to take a picture. And they're like, yo, dude, you got to deny it. Like, you got to stop. I'm like, no, like, I'm not going to deny a picture. And I'm not, again, like, this is just who I am as a person. It's like, if I deny a picture, I will not sleep at night. Because I'm like, holy <laughs> that kid is probably, like, hurt. And I can't hurt anybody. So, we end up leaving. And we got cars following us for 30 minutes recklessly driving on the freeway speeding. like straight up speeding brake checking us yeah and we didn't know what to do we were like okay like, so on. we're done there's no cops around there's only two sheriffs in this whole entire city yeah there was just two cops in the whole entire small town it's me you sam and colby we're driving on the freeway we see two to three cars behind us just tailing us tailing us the whole entire and way. then cutting us off and brake checking us as if they wanted us to hit them so they could like interact with us and Scary. that is so up and we were actually scared for our lives but guess what that actually got me 24 7 security so uh i am now secure for 24 hours seven days a week and i couldn't be happier because like i gotta care about my safety at times i really 100%. think that like i don't think that i'm like some kid with 19 million subs like you know sometimes i i look at myself as a normal person and i don't even mean to get deep but i used to always go out and eat by myself 
I used to always go out to the mall by myself. I used to always do things by myself because it's always fine to do some things by yourself. You don't need a friend with you. Just take some time to yourself. But now after I started getting bigger, when I would go out to eat by myself, people recording me, coming up to me and I would, I, I get anxiety. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, like this is, this is hard. Like I can't do this. It's crazy because you still don't think you're famous. And that's I why, don't want to think, and that's I'm not why, famous. Don't say that. No, no. People think. Yeah, no, no, no. But I'm just saying, like, I literally, when I tell people that, they're like, dude, rug, like, you're a superstar. You're this. I'm like, please stop gassing yeah. me up because I don't see myself like that. And again, That's why maybe, you're humble. maybe it's like, I have to at least think like, oh, I have like a lot of followers. I have to be careful. But like, so many people are like, dude, no, you're not just this. Like, you're that. And it's like, I don't want to get an ego. I don't want to do any of that because I've met people with egos and I never talk to them again. Yeah. And I hate it. And I'm like, bro, like. I get it now. Like I need security, but that's not going to change me as a person. Like yeah. me getting security is literally just for my own safety. There's been plenty Dead of ass. times where we've been in LA and we've gone to Melrose and people are like, rug, you're here without security. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this kid is the most nice, humble, genuine person. He doesn't think he needs security. He doesn't yeah, think he's famous. I don't, but, then, but in reality, you kind of do because there's a lot of people coming after you because of who you are. Dead ass. We've been on Melrose three times and every store we go into, like, the workers are like, yo, where's your security rug? I was like, do I need security? Like, that's really? actually scaring me because it's like, yo, like, if people keep mentioning it, like, I really might need it. And then after the haunted hotel that happened, I was like, all right, it's time. And the thing is, with that whole situation, even though they did ruin our video, we're still super appreciative of you guys because you guys... <laughs> even though they ruined our video. It is true, though. It's true. It's it, true. Our video did get ruined because... Because we were just about to go into talking to the spirits of the hotel and all you hear is... Bay's rug outside the window. Fireworks. Fireworks screeching on the street. Even though they might have interfered with the video, we f love We you got guys. love for you guys, no matter what. Definitely. Just, just, just please don't do that again. Yeah, it was scary. <laughs> please, do it in a respectful way. Like maybe wait calmly in a, in a single file line. Yeah. Like, I'm you, going to meet you. Hopefully that will happen. <laughs> no, but I love you guys. Thank you. All right, Noah. You're up. Story time? Yes, bro. Okay, well, one off the top of my head that recently just happened, and I thought it was so crazy, is like, I usually shoot my shot at girls, right? I'm usually the type of person to go out of my way and be like, yo, I think you're beautiful. Let me get your number. And it usually works. I'm pretty mm -hmm. good at it. But the other night, a girl shot her shot at me. Yo. And that's crazy because girls are always the type of people to wait for guys to come up to them. They're always the type of people to be like, you know, waiting there and not really like putting in effort. Yeah. But a girl came up to me and was like, hey. Who are you? And I was like, damn, that's big, big I energy. I that. <laughs> it is. It is. When you when a girl has the balls to come up to a guy, it just shows me that they're they're different. I respect You're flipping that. the script. And I was yeah. just like sitting there. I'm like, okay, let me evaluate if I even want to because I have self-respect for myself. I'm of not going to let any girl just come up to me and get her number. I have, I have, I have self-worth. So Talk to them. Get to know them more. Definitely. I care more about your personality. Obviously, if you have the looks, that's a little bit better. You know, I like, I like a Brazilian, <laughs> you know, some, whatever. Okay. But okay. anyway... She came up to me and was like, hey, can I get your Instagram? And I was like, yeah, of course. So I got her Instagram. We started talking a little bit and it was cool. I liked it. I'm like, okay, this girl's nice. I, I, let me see what I can do with it. And then later on in the party, she's talking to another guy. I've been out of the game for a, a long time. A hundred percent. It's changed for sure. Years it's on changed years. for sure. Now that social media is coming to play, relationships are completely Oh, dude. It's... Because as soon as you see that you have... <laughs> As soon as you see that you think you have something real, they'll compare it to other people's relationships. They'll look on social media and see like, why is it my relationship like this? And I'm just sitting here like, yeah. I'm just existing. If you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. And uh, so bad, too bad if you don't because I'm like lit, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys already know this wouldn't be a phase rug anything without a giveaway. Hey, let's go. We have to get back. We are partnering with Current, and we're going to be giving away $500 to 10 people who are watching this podcast. It could be you. Shout out to Current for sponsoring us. Current is literally the easiest way to bank straight from your phone. It's crazy because even before you said that, I already had a Current card and I was using it, and it's literally the easiest way. I'm 21. I barely know how to handle money. You guys already know. Current keeps it simple, authentic, and direct. How I treat my women. Exactly. And there's absolutely no hidden fees like all these like companies that have those like little things and right no hidden fees no nothing how i treat my women it's easy guys it's the 21st century literally everyone is banking on their phones and you need someone that you can trust 
and that's current. If you guys want a chance to win that $500, all you guys have to do is go on the All Grown Up Podcast Instagram. The link is down below. Go run it up. Follow us and follow all the instructions to enter the giveaway. I'm excited. All right, that's enough about our stories. It's time to get you guys involved and answer some of the questions you guys ask us because that's very important. We want to see what you guys want to know. So let's get into it. Okay. So I already had one pulled up here. What was the inspiration for the podcast? Easy question, easy answer. We just want to show you guys a real side of us. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like I said before, like we just have so many stories and I have so many different experiences that I felt restricted to talk about on my YouTube channel because yeah. I'm like, I don't think this would match my YouTube channel. You know, it's not like positive. It's not all like, it's not all positive in my life. Yeah. And I always felt restricted if someone talked about me, if someone said something about me, or if there's something that I just want to speak about, it's like, what better way to do it than a podcast? Because you just get like an hour long of raw conversation. And I always thought that my fans would respect that about me. And that's one of the main things is I just think you guys would have appreciated it. So let me know if you guys do appreciate it because Definitely. I'm happy. And I don't want to like show that it's okay to cuss. It's no, like no, a definitely, young definitely. person, you know, no, but 100%. as an older person who's now grown up, you cuss here and there, and like, sure. you know, this is where you guys will see that. And that's another thing. I'm only 21 years old. You're a little bit older than me. I'm still learning. So I'm old man, you're not that I'm old. 24. Okay. But that you're not old. That's that's old. You're definitely getting there though. Stop it. All right. <laughs> hey, let, let's get on to the next question, please. That's you. Oh, oh, this question is pretty good. What is it? What do you and Noah most commonly argue about? Ooh. There are some pretty freaking heated arguments that we so into, I'm not gonna i lie. think me and you don't argue a lot because i think that we're both on the same page about what we have to do sometimes you know things come up that we may not agree with but we always make it work exactly but there's been some heated arguments in the past and i would say more so recently definitely recently with this move to la yeah. and how everything like i said the timing of things is just crazy yeah but the one that i could remember is that tommy and adapt's house is that what you're going to talk about i was literally going to say oh this my god Okay, so we're just gonna break this down as fast as we can. Wow, okay, that but this night... is this is this is pretty like I just want you guys to know that if you have a best friend, like this if you happens. guys argue, it's normal and you guys have to just be on the right path and be on the same page. So yeah. this is a really, really tough situation that Noah and I got put into and pretty much Noah has been working for me for like two and a half years. Yep. And he actually drove down to San Diego from LA for two years every other day, which will take a toll on your mental health. Definitely. 1000%. I always used to question it too. I was like, Noah, how do you do this? And to begin with like starting off, I was just so dedicated not to say that I'm not now, but like I was just so passionate about what we were doing and I knew we had something good. And like, I always knew that this was going to turn out to be something crazy and like we're gonna be friends forever because you're literally the same person as yeah me. we're the same we're built the same we have the same mindset we're just personality you're my brother so at the end of the day i was like why would i not want to drive what two hours there two hours back no matter what every day to just put in the work and grind. put yourself in that position definitely there's that's not lot, dedication there's not a lot of people out there that will do that because they're not grinders they just want to sit and let things happen but really they want to get it handed to them. in reality you got to put in the work yeah so pretty much Noah got to a point where he's like, yo, like, I don't want to drive to San Diego anymore. I'm sick of it. And I want to move back to LA. And this is before I wanted to move to LA. I'm like this homebody. I'm comfortable at home. And I'm like, yeah, yo, like, so, so what happens then? Like, are you not my cameraman? Anymore? And the, the situation that we were trying to figure out was like, I was so adamant about still working with you, but I was still on the edge of it because my mental health and my happiness was just so in a different place that I didn't want to drive anywhere. I can't imagine. I, I didn't want to drive to San Diego anymore, but I also still wanted to work with you. And like, it was so hard to make it work. And that's how I felt. It's like, I didn't want to move to LA, yeah. but I still wanted you to work for me because yeah. if you moved back to LA and I stayed in San Diego, let's be honest, like the friendship would kind of like go away. It would too. drift away because we would drift away. Each, yeah, so, we would not see each other on a daily basis. It would it would not so be the same. So a lot of people know me as like someone that doesn't really have a lot of friends because I was all about family and I still am, but I didn't have friends in San Diego. So Noah always coming to San Diego, I was like, yo, I found a best friend that's real and For genuine sure. and literally the bestest friend. My God. Sound, I, I sound like a kid. It. No, I love you too. But like, so when that happened, him and I were like, yo, so like, what the f 
Is this the end of Phase Rug and Simplistic? Is this the end dynamic of Dynamic Duo? And Noah? Like, we're the f***ing dynamic duo. And imagine this, like, you live in San Diego for 24 years, and the only way that we could keep this friendship is if I got out of my comfort zone and moved to LA. And I'm not gonna lie, that is the main reason why I moved to LA was to literally stick with this guy. And, and that's, that, that means a lot. No, of course, bro. Like, this is like crazy to me because everyone knows me. I never wanted to move out of San Diego. Anyone that would bring up LA, I'm like, no. like, no, I'm not moving to LA. But then I sat for like a week and thought about it. And I'm like, yo, let me put myself in Noah's shoes for once. He drives down two hours every other day. And I'm like, yo, like, I'm not some like hot shot that I'm like, yo, I'm gonna just get rid of no one. And you could have been that guy. I could have. And the thing is like this whole process, I always looked for your best intentions. I never wanted you to, you know, do something you didn't want to do. But in my head, I was like, bro, you've done so much in San Diego. Obviously you're comfortable there, but you need change sometimes. Yeah. And I think anyone does. I feel like when you move out of somewhere you're not comfortable, I wanted to be there for you every step of the way. If you did move to LA, when you finally made the decision to move to LA, I was super happy and I was going to be there for you because I knew how much it was going to take of you. Of course. Thank you, bro. And this also ties back to me getting out of my comfort zone for once and trying something. Hence why I only did a three month rental because yeah. I said, it, I'm going to try it for Noah and for myself because I'm like, let me get out of my comfort zone. You can't, uh, how do I you say can't it? grow. With yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't grow as a person if you're comfortable 24 seven you have to get out of your comfort zone and learn more about yourself and this is what it has taught me so and far. that's what i thought coming and working for you in san diego i was based in la for my whole entire life i saw that you and i had like-minded personalities we kind of thought the same we're both grinders and i'm like F it. i'm just gonna go to san diego for how however long i have to and just make it work and i think i got to the point of where driving was becoming an issue i moved my whole life to newport beach which is an hour away from San Diego away from LA just to be midway to you. And I mean, I just thought that change was needed. And I think that we're both in a good place now where we're down the grind and you're in a different environment. I think we're doing good. We're definitely doing good. So that that all stemmed from an argument. Like we were arguing <laughs> big time that night. Okay, moving on to our next question. What is your worst childhood memory? <laughs> childhood, man, that's a long time ago. Uh, I have one that sticks out to me. What is it? Oh my gosh! So, I was a fan of Hannah Montana back in the day. Okay. Everyone knows that. I was literally obsessed with Hannah Montana. Okay. She went on tour. She had a concert featuring the Jonas Brothers. That's huge. I, I was in middle school and I was like, holy shit, I'm going to that concert because yeah. I'm actually a real fan of Hannah Montana. <laughs> I don't care how people took it. I went to that concert, had a, had a blast, bought her merch. I bought a Hannah Montana tour merch, all right? I wore it to school the next day, in middle school. You got flamed. I got, I got I'm not gonna lie, I'm sorry, <laughs> but like I literally got bullied to the point where at the end of the school day, my shirt was inside out and it was like a plain white tee. Because after- That sucks, It though. sucks because it literally like showed me, I was like, wait, so am I not supposed to be a fan of Hannah Montana? But honestly, that's what made me Hannah Montana, like this is so weird to say, but <laughs> as a kid watching Disney Channel every night before I slept made me want to be a star in the future. For sure. And it literally, I was like, I want to be like Hannah Montana. I want to be like freaking Selena Gomez from Wizards of Waverly Place. Like, I want to be a star. And that's what, when I watched Disney Channel, I would get so like anxious. Like, ah, like I want to do this. That could I be you. And guess what? Now to this day, I get called Rico from Hannah Montana, which is like just a crazy coincidence. It's a, it all ties in. But that was like my worst childhood memory because I literally got so <laughs> bullied. It was <laughs> but Noah, what about you? So I don't have like a lot that come off the top of my head, but one that's kind of funny is one time it was me and my cousin at my grandma's house and my cousin's the type of kid to make me do shit to get in trouble. Like he just wants to see like some entertaining shit. There's nothing else going on. So <laughs> We've all been there. There's a dog at my grandma's house and he usually sh all over the place right <laughs> so whenever you shit all over the place we have to scoop it up with this scooper thing right yeah he dared me to shit in the scooper thing me not the dog he wanted me to shit in there for a hundred bucks and i did it obviously i'm a down ass shit. i'm gonna go over there and take a shit in there i'm like yeah i got it easy for a hundred i would do i went over there in the backyard took a squat shit in the scooper and i never got my money he capped. Obviously, he's gonna cap. He's just gonna want to see that shit. But, hey, but I mean, it scarred me for life for that's, sure. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's bad. All right, let me ask the next question. 
Next question. Who are some people you'd want to have on your podcast? That's a great one. You start. I don't care how this sounds. I don't care how crazy you might think it is. I want Drizzy Drake. Okay, I just knew you were going to say I'm aiming for the top. This is going to be the top podcast. Why not have the top mother rapper artist god god <laughs> sitting next to me one hey day. let's speak it into existence drake we love you we drake love drake where is he at so that's one is yeah. that is that it that's your top that's my top person that's the only person i would really want to have a sit down combo with and really pick his brain about i things. like that yeah i got everyone knows me all right everyone knows who i'm gonna say i already know it <laughs> you want to say it at the same time three two one kylie, kylie jenner. jenner you are gonna be sitting here one day that's Kylie Jenner. Imagine just... No, no, it's not even on some Hold weird on. shit. Like, we're all grown up. Like, we're not going to be like, oh my god, Kylie Jenner. This guy is crazy. Oh, man. So, I want Kylie Jenner, Mr. Beast. Okay. Because that guy is wild. And For sure. And he does some on YouTube that is, like, people dream about. Like, yeah. he, like I'll have a dream that, oh, like... Imagine giving 40 cars away at 40 million subs. No, this guy did it. He literally just did it. I want to hear about all his stories. And, and how he became Mr. Beast. And he's going to hit 100 mil. He's going to be at the top of YouTube. Mr. Beast, I respect the f*** out of your grind. 100%. And uh, the last one, I would say Addison Ray, Just because. She's so f <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But Addison Ray, I know you might not be watching this episode, but you will be watching our future episodes. But if you are watching this episode... I'm, a, I'm just going to keep it like as respectful as possible. Like you're really just beautiful, you're beautiful. And, and your personality yeah, is amazing. You're, you, you just give off really good vibes. And I feel like that matches with mine and Noah's energy. And I think the fans would want to see that for sure. All right. Ooh, I really like this question because I feel like a lot of people want to know. Okay. What's it like being an influencer and do you ever feel pressured or do you get anxiety from being an influencer? I like that question. 100%. So being an influencer is mad fun. It's a blessing yep. and there's definitely some, you know, some things that aren't the best about ups being, and downs. Yeah. It has ups and downs. Um, keep saying, um, but I love what I do and I love making videos. And again, like I said, that's what I wanted to do as a kid, but it definitely gives me anxiety because having a, a large following is very scary. And I brought this up to you before. It's like, dude, like, it's impossible to please 19 million people. There's going to be like half of those people that don't support some of the content we put out or they don't like some of the things I've said. And that does give me anxiety because like I said, like I see myself as a normal person to the point where I'm like, I don't like, I can't just say like, Oh, I'm just going to ignore those comments. It, they do get to me 100%. and it gives me anxiety because I'm like, Oh my gosh, I want to please everyone. And I have to learn that I can't please everyone. And that does take a toll on me mentally. You know how I am as a person that yeah. like sh little shit affects me that you tell me not, not as to. much as it used to. No, definitely after moving out here and like, I just think that like when you used to see those hate comments, you used to only focus on the hate comments. But I mean, I always preach to you that like, even to yourself, you know, positive people will always stand out more. And I think that people that hate on you, you're doing it for a good reason. People are going to hate on you because you're so successful. And so that's the thing. It's like, I've never been in controversy. I've never had beef with anyone. I've never had drama. Like, so I always wonder, like, do people just pick on me because they think I'm an easy target? And I've really learned to get better with it now. For like sure. I don't let a lot of shit bother me because I'm like, Hey, I'm out here doing good things. I know at the end of the day, I'm a good person. I have a good heart and I don't care what other people have to say about me negatively For sure. because I know myself. So you're going to let things fall into place how they are. And if you fucking hate, then fuck you. Exactly. Yeah. I like that. Next question. I saw a lot of comments on this. Okay. Do you have merch dropping? Oh boy. Do we have merch? Are you hitting me? Do we have merch <laughs> dropping? Kidding me? Do we have merch? Do you drop? see this? You it's gonna be on a shirt and you're gonna on it because it's lit and it's fire. You wait, see this? You see this? Wait. Okay. <laughs> Do you see this? This is actually live right now. Not only this, but these shorts. Hold on. These shorts, AGU, with this infamous logo. This shirt, AGU uncensored. The bucket hat. We got sweats. Everything is actually live right now on phaseclan.com. We saw so many people support the merch that I was shocked because I'm not good with merch. I feel like most people want to wear this because it's just sick. It's sick. It's clean. It's simple. It's college, college styled. Themed. Yeah. It makes sense with all grown up. Like we're all grown up here. So 
Uh, yeah, if you guys want to cop the merch, rock it. You already know if I see you in public, I'm giving you the fattest hug if I ever see you wear my merch. And, you know, thank you for supporting us. And if you guys do buy it, I love you. If you guys don't, I still love you. Oh my gosh, guys. That is the end of Woo! our first podcast episode. Crazy. I cannot thank you guys enough for tuning in. And if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much. For this real. This means the world to us because this is... Our first time shifting over to a new platform. Yeah. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. And not only on YouTube, but on all the streaming platforms. I want you guys to subscribe there and never miss an episode. If you guys were entertained throughout this, if you guys love this, please let us know. Comment, like, share, subscribe. Show us that you love these and we will put out as many as you guys want to see. It'll motivate us. We got guests coming in. Like, we got... A lot of shit. It's crazy up. because they don't even know some of the guests that already want to be on these episodes. That's what I'm saying. And that's the scary part. You guys are going to be seeing all your favorite creators, all your favorite rappers. Already. It doesn't matter. They're going to be on this podcast. And this is just the introduction episode. And I feel like we revealed a lot. Already. And I'm happy. Like, I'm happy that you guys finally get to see this and get to know how we feel emotionally, mentally, and just the real shit. For sure. So thank you guys so much. I love you all so much. And please, once again, subscribe and share this podcast and, you know, run up the numbers. Let's get to the number one podcast in the freaking world, baby. World, baby. All grown up. Love you guys. Peace.